the little helicopter that could and almost did. In my life, I have been fascinated by the Cobra family of attack helicopters. When I grew up, I served 10 years in the Army Guard in an attack helicopter battalion that flew the AH-1S uh, modified Cobras before they later converted to Apaches. Later in life, I revisited my Cobra fixation by reading all the books I could find. One part of the Cobra story I feel that was really not covered was the Bell 249 prototype, a one-off that was never pursued but was actually quite useful as the test bed. I feel that the 249 would have been a great export for countries that could not buy the Apache and could have extended the life of the single-engine Cobras, many of which are still in service today quite a bit longer. The first experimental four-bladed -blade, main rotor system designed by Bell flew on a civil model 206L-M Long Ranger in 1978 and was tested for more than 800 hours in the air. This was followed by a system designed and certified for a variant of the Huey-derived model 212. The four-bladed helicopter was redesignated model 412 and the first of two prototypes flew in 1979. With all this work on multi-blade systems going on, Bell engineers looked at the prospect of mating the 412 main and tail rotors along with a beefed up drivetrain from the Huey Tug with the Cobra airframe. Such a union would provide an increase in payload and performance with a rotor more tolerant of G-forces that could broaden the appeal of the helicopter considerably. It was also a low-risk modification that would enable Bell to continue its policy of product improvement by evolution rather than revolution. Bell had a long history of using technology gained from military research in their civilian products and vice versa. Accordingly, in December 1979, the Model 249 was flown. This helicopter was a modification of the YAH-1S prototype, serial number 70160019, and with its four-bladed rotor, it soon proved to be fast and responsive. Of interesting note is that the YAH-1S prototype had previously been manufactured as an AH-1G and was converted to an AH-1Q prior to becoming the YAH-1S prototype. Following the success of the trials, a number of proposals were made to the U.S. and foreign militaries based on the multi-blade Cobra, all of which were aimed at the time of extending the useful battlefield life of the Cobra well into the 1990s, no, single-engine Cobras are still serving in 2023 alongside their twin-engine brothers. The first of these was the improved attack Cobra, sometimes referred to as the Cobra II or Cobra 2000 in Bell publications. Also, a small-winged model called Ash or at advanced scout helicopter that was a lightly armed scout for the AH-64 that could have included a mass-mounted sight. This was the feature, a 1723 shaft horsepower General Electric T700-GE-701 engine, multiplex wiring, and a full IR sensor sighting system in place of the standard optronics package. The helicopter would therefore be compatible with both AGM-114A Hellfire and the tow missiles, a feature that later was incorporated in the AH-1 Whiskey, and possess a realistic night adverse weather ca capability and perform better during NOE or nap of the earth flight. Bell suggested that the required modifications could all be incorporated during the remanufacturing cycle of the original 290 modernized S helicopters. The United States Army rejected the proposals virtually out of hand and put 
funding into the even more advanced light helicopter program or LHX instead. Presumably, any interest in the Bell proposals would have prompted someone in Congress to ask why the very expensive LHX was needed at all if the Cobra 2 slash Apache combination was such a good one. The ASH program was eventually dropped in favor of the less ambitious Army Helicopter Improvement Program, or AHIP, which resulted in Bell securing a contract to modify and update nearly 600 early OH-58 Kiowas to a new OH-58D standard. The Delta features a bigger engine, a night-capable mass-mounted sight, and a four-bladed composite rotor system. It was later armed with Hellfire's 2.75-inch rockets and a 50 caliber machine gun and became a light, heli a light attack helicopter in practice, so Bell did not totally lose out and made use of their research. The PAH-2 was the only 249 variant to result in any specific hardware. And even then, it was only in a representative form. During the 1980s, the Bundeswehr was looking to replace the aging BO-105 with a new dedicated anti-tank helicopter. The plan was for five pre-production and 207 production helicopters to really be delivered between 1986 and 1990. To this end, they initiated the PAH-2 program to which several helicopter manufacturers responded with proposals, including Westland with a Lynx, VFW Fokker, MBB Augusta with an A129 Mangusta. While other companies could only offer pre production mock ups, Bell would present a fully functional modified version of their combat proven AH 1 Cobra, the Model 249. In addition to its unique rotor system setup, which provided a significant boost to the Cobra's maneuverability and load carrying capabilities, the armament was also expanded to include the potential addition of Hellfire ATGMs in place of the TOWs, and either a total of four FIM-43 Red Eyes or FIM-92 Stingers mounted in twin pods on each of the wingtips. When tested by the Bundeswehr, it performed extremely well and was likely to meet or exceed all their requirements. The planned production of the PH-2 for the Bundeswehr would also be fitted with several additional improvements over the version tested. Firstly, the M65 telescope sighting unit would be replaced with the TADS slash PNVS uh, as featured on the AH-64 Apache, which would have provided which would provide a significant jump in capabilities compared to the M65. The HOT missile would also be integrated as well as improvements present on the AH-1F, including the Kaiser heads-up display, Teledyne Systems digital fire, fire control computer, Hughes laser rangefinder, Sanders ANALQ-144, infrared jammer, the Northrop Grumman AN APR-39 radar warning receiver, the AN ALQ-136 radar jammer, and the Perkin Elmer AN AVR-2 laser warning receiver, and an M130 general purpose dispenser for launching chaff and flares. The proposed empty weight would have been about 6,611 6, pounds, and a takeoff weight with eight hot missiles would have been estimated at 9,230 pounds, or with eight Hellfire missiles at 9,855 pounds. Proposed max speed was 155 miles an hour with a two and a half hour endurance. The proposal had a provision for Germany to provide about 50% of the work. 
They would provide the main and tail rotors, engine fairings, firewalls, landing skids, flight instruments and cabling, and be responsible for the final assembly. The PAH-2 would have been built under license by Dornier at their final production, production site near Oberpfaffenhofen, Germany. At that site, the Bell UH-1D Hueys were already being built under license for service with the German Air For Army and Air Force. The U.S. Army in Europe also had their older AH-1 Cobras upgraded at that site. This was the AH-1Q to AH-1S modified uh, update. Uh, by this point, the U.S. Army had already selected the AH-64 Apache to replace the Cobra and wasn't interested in upgrading their existing Cobra fleet. While Germany decided to take what they had learned from foreign helicopter designs and apply it to a new design, partnering with France to create the Eurocopter Tiger. This essentially ended the hopes for the mass production of the 249 or its derivatives, but the 249 was not dead yet. The Model 249 then went on to become a test helicopter for the Army's Advanced Rotorcraft Integration Program, or ARTI, which was essentially a test run of the avionics systems to be used in the LHX. Bell teamed with Sperry, Honeywell, and Texas Instruments to develop a computer-based fly-by-wire control system that allowed the pilot to fly hands-off allowing the Envision uh, single pilot to concentrate on navigation and engaging targets. The Bell 249 would continue to be used as a demonstrator before eventually being converted into a regular AH-1F and returned to the U.S. Army, later being withdrawn from service and sent to depot. It would have been better that this airframe would have gone into a museum, as it is a had essentially served as an AH-1G, an AH-1Q, the AH-1S prototype, the Bell 249 and PAH-2 demonstrator, and the ARTI test helicopter, as well as an AH-1F fully modernized Cobra. As the helicopter was being, as we was recorded as being delivered to Fort Drum during a period that Cobras were being re rebuilt or parted out, it is a good bet that at least parts of the helicopter went on to serve in a friendly nation, possibly in Israel. I hope that you found this uh, history as interesting as I did. Thank you very much.